Okay, Phonetics fans, I'm just here to give you a really brief tutorial on how to use Prod's automatic pitch tracker so you can see the pitch um, or the fundamental frequency of a person's voice um, in the stimuli that you might be listening to for, say, a transcription exercise. So for this, I'm going to follow along uh, the very like basic outline I've given for this on the second page of the Mystery Tone exercise, which is due uh, next week, at least it is, uh, when I'm making this in 2016. Uh, so there's not a lot there, so just walk you through the basic options that you have. I'm going to open up Prot, and uh, as always, I get an objects window and a picture window. I never use the picture window, so just close that up. I'm going to move this over here so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so I'm going to open uh, the sound file. Uh, I think you all know how to, how to do this by now. I've got um, a collection of sound files produced by different speakers, so I'll pick one uh, sentence produced by a female speaker first, then look at the same sentence produced by a male speaker. Uh, I opened it, um, it appears here in my objects window, so I'm just going to click uh, view and edit. Uh, it looks like this, um, we've seen this before, we've got a waveform on the top part of this and a spectrogram on the bottom. Uh, to look at the pitch, it's really simple, uh, I just go to show pitch, so there's this pitch tab on, up here, click on show pitch, and all of a sudden this blue line appears in the spectrogram part of this. So I will click on this bottom part to listen to the whole thing, you should be able to follow along, it'll sound a little bit higher pitched for the higher blue line in the graph and lower pitched for the lower blue line. He filled up the car last night. It's kind of a natural intonation contour in English where it um, has kind of a peak towards the end and then it drops down to just a low plateau at the bottom. Um, yeah. He filled up the car last night. That's how that works. It's pretty simple. I've got notes in here. There are other things that you might see. Uh, as you notice, there's a variety of tabs up here. Sometimes formants might be on and you see these red dotted lines. You can turn that off by just unclicking show formats. Uh, there's a show intensity uh, option that has a yellow line. We'll talk about that right after the midterm. Uh, you can turn that off as well. Other things like pulses, these aren't useful to you right now, so you can just turn them all off. All you need are um, basically is actually the, uh, the pitch track. Uh, since we don't even know how to use spectrograms right now, I could even turn off the spectrogram and just see the blue line itself. He filled up the car last night. Um, right. I will also show you another trick that could be helpful. So I'm going to open up this for one of the male speakers in this database. Same sentence. View and edit. You filled up the car last night. Uh, you'll notice this tells you the exact specific frequency that the speaker is producing at any particular point in time. So over here on the right-hand side, there's a range from 75 hertz to 500 hertz. That's how many times the vocal folds are opening and closing a second. Um, if I click, say, over here... I see um, at a high point it's got 176.3 hertz down here. At a low point is right next to sort of 75 hertz. is actually about 80 hertz um, if you round up there. Um, you filled up the car last night. This actually makes it a little bit difficult um, with a broad range from 75 to 500 hertz to see exactly what's going on. So you can compress the range and it might help you analyze where the high and low points of this are. So I'm going to compress this from 75 to 200 hertz in the pitch range settings right here. He filled up the car last night. And those mm, kind of minuscule distinctions get exaggerated so you can see them better. So there's more of a peak here. Car last, car last, last night. So on and so forth. And you need to play with, around with it as much as you want for uh, the rest of the exercise. Uh, I'd actually recommend that. I think it helps you see tone contours better. However, there's a danger that uh, you can run into when you do this. So I'll go back to the female production. And all of a sudden, you'll see we had a nice, clear contour before. Now it just looks like a jumpy mess up and down. He filled up the car last night. That doesn't really seem to correspond to um, exactly what we hear in the speaker's voice. So the problem is that the pitch range is too small for this speaker. Um, so we need to expand it again. I can't remember what she hit at the top end. I'll expand it to 400 um, and get something that looks like this. He filled up the car last night. I could even bring up the bottom end because female speakers don't often go below 100 hertz. Um, or maybe even higher than that, like 125, just to be able to see that contour a bit better. He filled up the car last night. Here's that nice kind of car last. Um, emphasis and then fall at the tail end of it. Uh, be aware of that. Uh, if your pitch range is too small, expand it so you can see it better. Um, and if your pitch range is too big, it's totally fine to constrain it or contract it so that you can see the pitch contour better. Um, I don't think there's really anything else here that I need to talk about. So have at it uh, and let me know if you have any questions.